the NBA, they decided not to ban Mark Cuban despite multiple sexual harassment charges that were have arisen within the Mavericks organization. Keisha, Keisha, I ask you, did the NBA do the right thing here? Well, there were two factors that um, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, pointed to as to why he uh, ch chose this punishment for Mark Cuban. One, it was determined that Cuban wasn't involved directly in the harassment, and two, Cuban had uh, was very transparent during the investigation process, and then after the report was issued, or maybe while the report was being compiled, that uh, Cuban and the Mavericks instituted uh, sweeping changes rather quickly to prevent this from happening again. But, you know, I was really surprised and I found the punishment to be a little lenient, especially in this, uh, given the extent of the allegations and the duration of this institutionalized behavior. And I just, I, I find it hard to believe that over the course of two decades that Mark Cuban didn't know anything, not even a whisper. I just don't know how it could be this rampant. We're not talking about one or two cases where maybe it was kind of easy maybe to to push it under the rug or there wouldn't be a, a chatter but you know you're talking about 15 women and maybe even more that had issues um and you know the mark um i'm sorry adam silver mentioned cuban's absenteeism which i found a little interesting because if my memory serves me correctly mark cuban was thought of to be one of the more hands-on owners in the nba so i don't know how you can be hands-on but then not know uh, that this is happening to you. And, you know, in the era of this Me Too movement, I just thought that, you know, we've seen actors and executives lose their jobs based on allegations alone. And then moving it to back to sports, you have the NCAA. Coaches have lost their jobs over the actions of their players. And I'm not saying that Mark Cuban deserved to be banned or lost his team. But to me, writing a check for a billionaire is, is nothing. $10 million to him... It, it's not a lot. I mean, it's going to go to uh, worthy causes and that they could use the money, but I just don't feel as though the punishment was fits the crime. And just, you know, to, to sum it up, there's really not any amount of money that will ever um, equate to what these women experience. I mean, I've, I've experienced it firsthand myself, and there's not a not it, it's it's one of the worst feelings that you can have as a woman and probably as a human being to be the target of sexual harassment and you know i just hope that um in addition to the fines that you know adam silver did speak to uh, i think the board of governors or he did send out a memo and in that memo he used language urging not mandating, but strongly recommending that other teams look at their houses and make sure that they have, all, you know, their ducks in a row and that they have safeguards against this. It's a ten million dollar slap on the wrist, is the way that I see it. I think that there certainly could have been a harsher penalty. Now, I'm not saying that they should have made Mark Cuban necessarily give up ownership of the team, or I'm not sure what type of suspension or whether you can take away draft picks in a situation like this. But for him to go out and get now, granted, he's giving this money to some good causes, and it is ten million dollars. But at the same time, I think that there could have definitely been a harsher penalty. Again, I don't know specifically what, but I think that he certainly not only for Mark Cuban, but the the Mavericks got off easy here. I think what's interesting with Mark Cuban is, remember, this is now someone who's become sort of this golden boy owner, right? Here's a guy that bought this team. He's the tech guy that became a multimillionaire, became a billionaire, was able to buy the Dallas Mavericks. And ironically, if you look back, back in the early mid-thousands, mid-2000s, he was always in the doghouse with, with, uh, with the NBA front office. And he sort of changed that whole dynamic and the way that his relationship is uh, with the owners and with, with other owners and, of course, with the commissioner as well. I'm not saying that that's what necessarily contributed to this sort of easy slap on the wrist that he got, but there's no question that some changes could have been made. And the final thing that I'll, I'll, I'll say is, you know, Sports Illustrated came out with this article um, talking about these allegations, but I think back in February of this year, mm -hmm. in the report that they have, I think that some of this stuff that's been going on has even happened since that February article that was yeah, released wow. in Sports Illustrated. So I think there's certainly some changes that the Mavericks definitely need to make. And of course, Mark Cuban certainly made some mistakes here, but I think he's definitely got off a little bit easy. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think and hope that he's learned his lesson because 
if something like this happens again, I think even the smallest of infractions or even hint of harassment could open another uh, Pandora's box for him, and he won't get off easily. And I, he, there's no way he could. And I don't think Adam Commissioner, um, Adam Commissioner, <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Adam Silver would allow it right. because he, Adam Silver couldn't take, you know, wouldn't be able to take that public hit in, on his image. Absolutely.